The VHS or video cassette or the video tape, no matter how you reference this popular influential media format, it was a cornerstone of your grandparents, parents, older siblings, or one of your friends who bitches about how the past generations were better and yet owning the latest and greatest gadgets. Try going a day without the internet or using your smartphone, you fucking prick. Look, I'm not gonna go on a bitch fit, but we're gonna focus on this plastic rectangular device that is the VHS and the documentary of today called Rewind This. The movie focuses on the outdated format and how it impacted the cinema culture from the format wars, the rise of his popularity, to his faithful end which led them being sold for 5 bucks for 10 cassettes. The style of this documentary is a standard interview with the interviewee talking about how the VHS played an important role in their life, showing off their collection, or talking about how unique was the VHS during the time period. As I stated before, the VHS was born out of competition. Before the VHS became the go-to media to own, Sony came out with the Betamax, and if you're a tech fan, you probably know this story without even skipping a beat, but everybody else who's out of the blue or want to learn a few facts, here it goes. During the 70s, Sony was gaining popularity due to the radios and the transistor being well liked and received. They decided to create Betamax to staple the brand to the world and like the radio and transistor, it was well received and Sony was heading towards the right path. But then JVC came out with the VHS in 1976, a year later of the Betamax release and even though Betamax picture and sound was way better than VHS and even the documentary did a comparison between both cassettes, the only drop back was the Betamax had a 1 hour recording cap while the VHS has a 2 hour recording cap and yet with the Betamax outperforming VHS, the VHS had an ace in the sleeve and that card was the video rental industry and with the 2 hour recording time to boot, the Betamax became a dust collector while the VHS pranced with Wii. But then Sony came back with the Walkman and regained their popularity and that ladies and gentlemen is the story of the format war between Betamax and VHS and sure there were other wars like the high definition DVD versus Blu-ray or audio cassettes versus CD or even iPod versus Zune even though that's a technological war and not media war. And the reason why I talk about this is two things. One, the movie didn't touch base on it. Well sure they did the whole comparison and showing advertisements between Betamax and VHS but it wasn't well detailed and well thought out and two it's history and technology and I love both and while reading this type of topic I kind of learned a little bit more than I already knew in the past so learning more about this was amazing and kind of got my inner geek out also if you want to learn more about VHS or Betamax Check out this guy, he has a degree while well, I lost mine somewhere, but yeah, check him out and enjoy the tech porn for 40 seconds. The documentary will have a strong appeal for either movie buffs or for the people who collect VHS because the movie is jam packed full of cameos like David Gregory, the founder of Seren Films, Lloyd Kaufman, the founder of Trauma Entertainment, Charles Band from Full Moon Features, Don May Jr. from Synapse Films, and David. The Rock, Nelson! Uh, 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 I'm gonna get you my devil hand. If you don't watch this movie by The Rock, I'm gonna show you, look. Show it, show it, yeah. look. The Rock's got it. Show him. Yeah, one. I drink like four glasses of milk Two, a day. three. And I four. eat good, I get my protein. You know, a beef patty with some rice and maybe some veggies or a small salad and I, you know, I, every day I have like a banana or an apple. You know, get, get my fiber, get my fruit. So, you know, all natural bodybuilding. I never took a steroid. It's all natural, bud. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. Ladies and gentlemen, David The Rock Nelson. Yeah, he's a director. Also, there were actresses appearing in this documentary, and they are Shoko Nakahara from Visitor Q and Cassandra Peterson, otherwise known as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And man, she still had the looks. Not only did the documentary cover the cinema part of the VHS, but they also talked about how the porno industry benefited from the plastic rectangular boom. Just like the movie scene where you had an abundance of titles to watch, the porno industry copied their format as well, releasing numerous upon numerous of titles to satisfy the hungry masses. So yeah, this documentary has a clear content and dirty content because the director also showed porno clips. And like I said before, this is not a family friendly documentary, so watch it alone or with your friends 
friends, but with your mom and dad, that's a gamble already lost. The perks about this film is a nostalgic trip that the movie oozes because you basically have people having a bond with the cassettes by either recreating their favorite movie or even making home movies to watch with the people they created with. To talking about the famous glitch, and the famous glitch is basically scramble images from rewinding to a specific scene and repeating it so the image goes fuzzy and skips, basically breaking the continuous flow of the movie. The other perk of this film is the cover art itself. Now the movie did talk about the cover art and basically stated that even though you created the shittiest movie ever, the cover art can save your ass and put money in your pocket. And the interviewees did hit a chord about today's cover art and I agree because today's cover art is basically showing actors in weird poses or their heads and photoshop to hell. While cover art in the 80s and early 90s were hand drawn and it had its personality and the cover art for Rewind This is an ode to the lost practice and I'm probably gonna get on a poster form of this cover art in the near future. The downside of this film was the cameos. Sure I did mention some noticeable ones but this film is packed them to the brim and some did a 20 or 45 second appearance while others did half of the film but yeah it was a bukkake of appearances and I wish that the director kind of trimmed the fat on that one. The other downside of this film was the lack of VHS specifications because even though the people in the film talked about how the VHS became the holy bible to them, no one would disassemble a tape and talk about the specs which is why I took the chance and gave it my own spin. Hello, this is your captain speaking. Today we're going to dissect the VHS. In order to dissect your VHS and to look inside what's inside of this rectangular box, you need the following. A video cassette, a Phillips, Phillips head screwdriver, make sure it's the star, and basically an ice tray in order to catch these screws. Well then, let's begin. As you can see, this is all plastic and with a magnetic tape on the top so you know it's safe. You see? Right on the back, you're going to see five screws right here. See, three right there and two right there. Oh, in case you're wondering, I'm just wearing gloves because I don't want to get no fucking diseases from the 80s. So, yeah, the uh, VHS was a very innovative uh, machinery. Uh, not machinery, but basically an added media. Uh, that started in the 70s and it was basically low graphics. It barely had any sound and the video quality was shit so I don't know why the fuck it survived the console war but it's just like vinyl. You had CD still dominating the public and yet you know some asshole or some pretentious prima donna is gonna own a fucking vinyl vinyl or records whatever and you know display like a fucking retard so right after you remove your five screws make sure to put each one of them in their individual holes on the ice cube because you don't want to lose this shit otherwise your tape won't work see one two uh three four and five right there fuck it and then we're just gonna pull this case ever so gently. There you go, gently. And just, eh, fuck it. And you can see right here, this kind of looks like one of those film reels that you see on an old, on an old projector, or one of those uh, really big sound disc. Uh, that's all magnetic tape and the one that can remember is an Akai A-K-A-I and those were really popular as you can see here this is the uh, little trap uh, to protect the magnetic uh, case yeah fuck this and you can see this glory uh -huh. as you may know this tape is actually a virgin so putting your fingers inside a virgin must feel pretty good, doesn't it? Mmm. First time. See? This is the starting point, as you can see right here. The starting point. So this tape has never seen daylight, nor have never been inside of a VHS player. Look at that. Uh, whoa. As you can see here, all the glory.
Oops, you can see me. You can see all the glory right here. This can hold, as I believe I saw in the box, like six hours of footage or whatever the hell you want to put. Yeah. Fuck this. Fuck this. Come here, you little shit. Come here. No, fuck this. Fuck this. You know what? Fuck. I'm gonna do justice to this motherfucker. Hang on. Ugh. God. Hang on. Ugh. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Don't fucking look at me. Don't you dare. Oh, oh God. Mm. Oh, what did I made? Oh. Ah, fuck this. Ah. Ah. Mm. Ah. Mm. Satisfaction. Fuck. Mm. It's dead. It's fucking dead. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to disassemble your VHS. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, whatever the hell you want to do. Uh, this is the captain speaking, signing off. Die! Uh. Wasn't that educational, people? Overall, this film was about the rise and fall of VHS, or video cassettes, or whatever you want to call it. From surviving the war, being the golden child for home entertainment, the star of bootlegging movies, to the fall from grace by closure of video rental, streaming services, torrenting, and better media substitutes like Blu-ray. Would I recommend this film? Well, I would say yes because I found some parts in the film that I liked, and they were the comparisons between the American and Japanese adult video industry, Dimitri Samakis, the bastard from Everything is Terrible, and they did a shout out to the Crazy Dave's tape by not retitled Tron, but I can see why they want to acknowledge the crew, and Lloyd Kaufman. But the film didn't appear to the common watcher. It felt like the movie was for the people who are into the collecting scene or in the movie buff scene. And if it wasn't for tits and catchy cover art, this film might get a lukewarm review for critics. But recommending this film? Uh, yeah, go ahead and watch it. But I will understand if you turned it off due to not appealing to your taste or the whole rant about how companies or other sources kill the cassette scene. So yeah, if you want to see massive collections, some great B-movie clips, or walking down a nostalgic trip, then this film is for you. Until then, we meet again, and please, please, EIT, come back to the East Coast, man. Dancing drunk was the best thing ever, and I'll donate every Jerry Maguire's I can find around my area, just to, you know, see you guys again. But then again, why are you going to watch this video? So yeah, until then, we meet again. Now I'm sad.